from the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. My name is Rick Trader, and I'm coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, Red State Talk Radio, AM, FM 24-7, and a whole bunch of others. And joining us very shortly is going to be George Landreth. George is the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. And, John, if you would just call George and, and we'll do the show over the phone today instead of Skype. And, oh, and this is the, the joys of doing live radio. So we'll have... Uh, George uh, joining us very shortly. Rick, can you hear me? Because oh, I think I'm on. Oh, uh, yes, you are, George. We do have you. Yes, we've got you now. We were going to call you on a landline, but uh, since we, you can hear us well, we, uh, I can. we're we good to go. So, Excellent. George. This is the joys of being at Scout Camp and doing a radio show. Yeah, Scout Camp. Well, enjoy that yep. one. Enjoy at Boy that. Scout Camp. It's been a pretty good week. Good. A few mosquito bites. Hopefully none of them have the uh, Zika virus. Other than that, you know, life's good. Life is good. Life is good. You know, a lot of the athletes are not going to Rio de Janeiro for the Olympics because of the the threat of the Zika virus and also the 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 poor trashy conditions. Uh, I had heard that uh, just recently, body parts washed up on the beach where they're going to have the beach volleyball tournament at the Olympic Games. So, uh. well, that, that adds ambiance, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it adds character. Adds a little aroma too, but they've yeah, been warned yeah, for aroma. they've been warned for some time now that uh, the conditions at this year's Olympics might be a little rough. But George, that's what happens when political correctness gets in, it gets involved. It used to be that when they chose a site for the Olympic Games, they chose the best venue. But now it seems like, well, we got to be politically correct to everybody. So Rio de Janeiro got the games this year. It's been mismanaged since the beginning, and the water's dirty, and the bugs are big. And it might be the last time they host an Olympics in a very, very long time. Well, as it should be, as it should be. In, if, I, if I was Absolutely. dictator, if I was dictator of the world, the Olympics would always be held in, in Greece. That's where I think they. Sure belong. enough. Yeah, there are Los Angeles, Los Angeles games were pretty good. So were the so were the uh, Olympics up in Lake Placid, New York. They were two of the best. Yeah, so, George, what's were. on your radar screen today? Well, I don't. I saw some interesting news. Um, this was this will not come as a surprise to anybody who lives in the real world, but uh, there was a study from BYU that states, "quote Parents should really consider the long term impact of the Disney princess culture." End quote. So, breaking news: Disney princesses do not represent real everyday life. I'm glad. I'm glad they did that study because I, up to this point, I was totally, uh, you know, confused by that. I just thought that's how life was, <laughs> well, and I just felt left out because I knew I wasn't a princess, <laughs> and they don't really have Disney prince stories. So I mean, you know, in the interest of equality and so forth, yes. I just, I think it's. I think Disney should do more uh, Disney prince stories, don't you think? Instead of these bit parts where you show up at the end and kiss the sleeping girl and she wakes up or something. 
Well, that's when Disney was Disney. Today, Disney is this political corrupt, correct corporation that has been corrupted from the vision that Walt Disney ha- intended it to be. You well, know, you used to go. You, you, George you used to be. You go. You would go to a Walt Disney movie, and you would you would know what you would get. You would get uh, Cinderella. You would get the uh, the fairy princess and all that. Now you. Now you don't know what you're going to get. You might find out you're getting pornography. But uh, th- th- this idea of a prince's culture, I mean, these are people who are not living in reality. Yep. Well, in another show, bu- show business news, uh, a federal court jury, a, this is a jury trial, decided that Led Zeppelin did not steal a riff from an obscure 1960 instrumental tune as the introduction for its classic rock anthem Stairway to Heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad to know that because as a kid growing up, I really liked Stairway to Heaven. Me too. I liked Led Zeppelin, so you know. Absolutely. So so they're in the clear. Thanks to a federal jury out there somewhere. When did Stairway to Heaven come out, George? It had to be in 1969, Um, 1970 maybe? I was going to say 71 or 2, but well, maybe ask, it's, John, uh, John, it might be you, a tad uh, earlier. John Forsyth Jr., could you Google that for us? Stairway to Heaven, what year that came out? Well, from, we'll get that information because we are on the Internet. We have a an Internet-savvy young man right behind us, John Forsyth That's awesome. Jr. Well, while he's looking 1971, that up. 1971, uh, see? 1971. 70 what? 1971. Okay. So some, right between us, what we said. Yeah, some glance yeah. finally uh, settled. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah. So, what? <laughs> like forty some years later, yes. uh, we've a, a jury decided that it was okay. And by the way, it's considered generally one of the top, uh, uh, you know, rock and roll tunes of all time. So I'm glad to hear that a jury approves as well. Um, something I think our listeners will not approve of is that there are the news out was that nearly 100 veterans in Houston waited an average of 81 days for care after schedulers at a Department of Veterans Affairs hospital canceled their appointments. So in other words, they waited, they had an appointment, it was canceled by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and then they waited 81 more days. In other words, almost three months Hmm. to reschedule their appointment. I wonder how many of those veterans died in the meantime, George, because they didn't get the care they needed. The interesting thing was the the veterans' uh, uh, wait times on the logs did appear to be much shorter than they were in reality because when they were entered in, the staffers were told to designate the appointments as canceled by the patient's request when, in fact, they had been canceled by the VA. So, George, here we have another case of cooking the bucks. Yep, you got it. It's uh-huh. wonderful, isn't it? I yes. mean, it's I, it's it's not funny, but I, what's sad about this is this is often the way big government works. Um, you you see this at the IRS. Uh, they do things they're not supposed to do. When they're caught doing them, they hide the records. They they lie about the records. They destroy the records. You see the VA doing this. You see Hillary doing this. This is symptomatic of uh, a culture of uh, essentially, I would just say dishonesty. I mean, this is, I'm at scout camp, you know, a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, great, starts off with trustworthy. I, big government's not trustworthy. And if this doesn't show that over and over and over again, and it's not just, you know, little white lies. These are not little white lies. These are big deals. So I, hey, I, I, I hope our uh, listeners understand there's a reason why our founders distrusted big government. And, and we see it now. Because well, we have George, this is government, this, is and it's this, not doing a very good job for us. George, is this the new norm, or has it always been this way, but we're just now finding out about it? And if there, if this is the new norm, will there ever be a time to go back to the way it was? Well, you know, the interesting thing is, um, I think that um, government has different incentives than private industry. So, you know, if I walk into a shoe store and the shoe salesman's rude, uh, sells me lousy shoes that don't fit, I don't go there anymore. They go out of business. Mm-hmm. 
when I go to the DMV and they treat me shabby and, and, and get things wrong and lose paperwork and it's a nightmare, I can't go to a competing DMV and, and, and take my business elsewhere. I'm stuck. So there's a very different set of incentives. So I would argue government always is going to be is going to have these problems simply because life is about incentives. The reason why do people show up to work? Because if they don't, they get fired and they can't pay their bills. Um, I mean, obviously, some of us have a work ethic too. But in the final analysis, accountability is what makes things work, and and government doesn't often have it because it's powerful. So the founders wanted it one to not be big. And two, they wanted to limit the times and ways in, in its life it could do this to you. And the problem with big government, why I think we see it so much more now, is because government's doing everything. And so our entire life now is surrounded with this kind of garbage. And so instead of being in a big lake with maybe like a, a wad of gum got thrown into the lake, there are dump trucks dumping garbage in the lake. And we're swimming in it. Now we go, oh, my gosh, this lake's not clean. And I think, you know, this is not acceptable. I think that's kind of what happens is as the government's gotten bigger, it, government was always inefficient and responded to odd and a different set of incentives. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it was really small and not involved in your life very much, it basically just built some roads and delivered the mail and uh, made sure we had national security taken care of. Then it wasn't really confronting you with all the garbage. But now that it's decided it wants to buy our health care and do this and, you know, run our schools and our businesses and tell us which bathrooms we can use, it wants to be in the intimate details of our life. And I mean intimate. I mean, I, that's not just an expression. It's gotten that absurd. Um, then all of a sudden we realize, oh, my gosh, there is so much garbage floating around here. What's going on? And I think we wonder if this is new. And I would say the problem's not new. It's the intensity of the problem. It's the concentration level of the problem. Uh, that's why the founders always had low expectations for government. That you know they viewed it as important on some level, but it also understood that it had its drawbacks. And I think you see it here. That, at least that's my take. Okay. Now I agree with I you. Would on say that. Th this administration, of course, is more corrupt than most. Hey uh, George, they, they, can we hold that thought and take our break oh, yeah. now? Absolutely, sure, sure. All right, you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show Hour of Action with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. Coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, Red State Talk Radio, AM, FM 24-7. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. Today's show is being brought to you by the First Amendment and protected by the Second. George and I will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. We're David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival and a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product in the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade, 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweet right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug-out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey. 
or call 765-641-9972, 765-641-9972. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, Hour of Action with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And George, this is for you. What's that? Can you hear it? I'm not hearing it. I can hear you, but I'm not hearing what you are wanting me to hear. Uh, well, we're playing a little bit of Stairway to Heaven. I oh, think. I hear it now. Stairway to Heaven. Okay, there I can hear it now. There you go. Excellent. And if you'd like to hear rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our website, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or, or in the afternoon at 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net. Or at 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com or midnight can hear our show by logging on to redstatetalkradio.com or you can always hear our show from any telephone by calling 832-999-1199. All right, George, and you know, you just before we went to the break, you were talking about how about government providing and big big business and things. And I I had a thought today too. I think another thing that has changed is Politicians don't think like people anymore. They're not people anymore. And where I'm coming from right here in this, in the garbage state of New Jersey, they want to pass... It's the garden state. I call it the garbage state, okay? <laughs> okay. But they want to pass a massive tax hike to go along with all the other massive taxes in the state of New Jersey. New Jersey is the highest tax state there is. And right now, the one break, the one break that we get is because uh, is the price of gas. But they want to pass a massive tax states, taking our price of gas from one of the lowest in the country to the seventh highest in the country. Now, let me tell you who is one of the people behind all this, George. And that's Governor Chris Christie. That fat jerk, Governor Chris Christie, who I've been railing about for years, not really being a conservative, by being the quintessential rhino. He is the one who's pushing this massive tax hike. And what I was thinking about today, George, is these people up in Trenton or in Richmond, where you're at down there in Virginia, or in Washington, they're so out of touch with reality, they don't realize how these massive tax hikes hurt the average person. They keep talking about uh, middle-class America, but they have no idea what middle-class America is. Because anytime they need money, they just go and tax. They don't have a money problem. They do have a spending problem, okay? But they don't have a revenue problem because whenever they need money, they just go and pass another tax. Right now, New Jersey spends more on roads to repair its roads than any other state in the country. But that's not enough, George. They want more. And I think it's part of the problem is the mentality of politicians, okay? I doubt that Chris Christie knows how much it's a tank of gasoline is. I really do. Because Chris Christie or any of the others in the New Jersey State Legislature, they don't have to buy gas. Their gas is paid for. They have expense accounts every time they, they go somewhere, quote unquote, on state business. They have, they have expense accounts. They don't care about the price of gas or the price my, of milk or the price of potatoes. Right. Well, my, my suspicion is the way they see the issue is they say to themselves, think of all the good we can do with this money once we tax it, which always begs the question of what good gets undone because you don't have the money to spend anymore. It's not like you were just going to you know, spend the money on stupid stuff. 
Um, and and it's, the fact is government, it's actually highly likely they will spend the money on stupid stuff. But at, when I sat on a school board, that was always the conversation was think of the good we can do with this money. And I'd always kind of scratch my head and go, so what do you think is being done with that money now? Like, do you think that it's like blowing it at, uh, I don't know, casinos or something? I mean, yeah, the reality is people are saving for their kids' college education. They're getting them piano lessons, le getting them dance lessons, enrolling them in summer camp and, uh, you know, buying them a new warm winter coat because they've grown since last year. All that kind of crazy, stupid stuff. And yet that's what the, the they always want to take money from you because they are sure of one thing, and that is they can spend your money better than you can yeah jared part of the problem is and part of my problem with this massive gas tax tax hike is it's not going to the roads or bridges okay a lot of this money about 40 percent of it is going to mass trans transit and to subsidize mass transit governor christie that fat slob had the audacity to go on tv last night and say well everyone must pay their share well what about mass transit when are they going to pay their share now another thing you've heard of the bridge to nowhere right george yes i have right now they want to build a train to nowhere they want to build a train tracks to nowhere actually to phillipsburg pennsylvania that's a, a new jersey i'm sorry uh phillipsburg new jersey which is right across the delaware river from the um, uh, 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 Pennsylvania but they suspect suspect that the ridership on this train service they want to build will be about 150 passengers a day so they want to spend about 500 million dollars for this train to pick up about 150 people a day my wow, God, for that for kind of money, you could buy them a car. Disney Prince's coachman to come bring them to and from work daily. It's it's, it's crazy. Hey, George, I know you're working on a small screen, so I'll give you this cue over there. It is break time again, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show, Hour of Action, with George Landreth and Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network. At WNJC 1360 and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, Red State Talk Radio, AM, FM 24-7. Don't forget, I've been the one that has been telling you about Chris Christie for eight years. We'll be right back. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 9-11, it's a day that will go down in our history as the most horrific and destructive scene ever to happen on American soil. It will also be, for most Americans who witnessed it either up close or simply watched in horror on TV, America to participate in a national memorial I call the United Action of Prayer 
this coming 9-11 and every 9-11 from then on. United Action of Prayer is simply every American stopping whatever they are doing for one minute at precisely 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or pray in memory for the 9-11 victims and their families and perhaps a prayer of gratitude for living in a country where even 9-11 could not at all weaken the spirit of our great nation. If you're in a crash and have little cash, come to AJ Auto Body. We handle insurance claims fast and repairs are guaranteed to last at AJ Auto Body. Come check us out and without a doubt, you'll be satisfied. That's AJ Auto Body, 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. Family owned and operated for 30 years. We are a fully licensed and insured auto repair facility located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. We are your friend in the business. So stop in for a free estimate or call us at 856-251-0096. Check us out on the web at www.ajautobody.net. That's where you'll find our specials, discounts, and coupons. For all your car needs, come to AJ Auto Body, located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. 856-251-0096. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at wnjcradio.com check out our websites conservative commandos radio network.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates we are the conservative commandos radio network where even more newsmakers go to be heard from the east coast to the West Coast, and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, Hour of Action with George Landreth and Rick Trader. And if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of our shows, also known as podcasts, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com, or afternoons at 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net, or at 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com, or at midnight. Log on to redstatetalkradio.com, but you can hear our show and all the shows 
that are associated with the Conservative Commandos Network here at WNJC 1360 from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199, 832-999-1199. You don't need an app or to download anything. You just need that number. So, George, you know, seven years ago when I started doing this show, I was wondering what we would talk about each and every day. But, my gosh, I don't have to worry about that. There's always something, always, always something happening. And since the last time you and I talk, uh, Great Britain has decided to leave the European Union. Uh, George, are you there? Yes, I am. Sorry, I. Uh, That's okay. You got to remember to unmute my mic. I need that um, microphone button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that's interesting is that the, the left wing media, as it always does, describes what happened in terms of these uh, terrible Brits who are racist and stupid voted to leave the EU. And I would argue that leaving the EU was the most logical and sensical thing to do, and it had nothing to do with race or immigration it had to do with national sovereignty these uh, britain has hundreds of years of proud heritage of being one of the world's foremost democracies and helping lead the way into a world where democracy is uh, well accepted it had a, a, a par- parliamentary system many, many other places in the world mimic that parliamentary system and they got tired of the fact that unelected bureaucrats in belgium uh, were the ones that uh, were calling the shots in so many cases. And and so they just came down to a point of, well, wait a minute, we're Brits. We can do this. We don't need them to tell us what to do. And I think it's a lot like the average American, who's as the federal government has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and stopped doing its primary functions of, of national security and, and those sorts of things and started trying to run our businesses, raise our children, run our families, determine our health care policies and, and what doctors we can see and what services we can receive and all that. We're starting to feel the same way, like, wait a minute. I think I got this. And, um, you know, so... Uh, to me, th- this is what happens with big government. People chafe under big government. And there's nothing – I know the left, this is news to the left. The left thinks that big government is awesome, totally, you know. But, uh, but the reality is the average real person chafes under the weight of a, a non-responsive big government. And the EU was big government at its worst. And so the, um, the Brits said enough. And, and it wasn't just conservatives. It was you know, liberal Brits, the just people who said, you know what? We can do this. We don't need the EU to tell us what to do all the time. If you look at what they do, they stifle innovation and competition because they have this regulatory zeal uh, that, it, that just stifles. They also have this, uh, this essentially this, what I would call an anti-enterprise sort of approach. They um, – they, they act in the interest of big business because they can afford uh, the lobbyists, um, but they do not um, allow the small entrepreneurial. You know, you know, like where we're. I know we think now of Microsoft as a big company, but Microsoft didn't start out as a big company. Apple's a big company. Didn't start off as a big company. They may be able to afford lobbyists now, but back in the late seventies, they couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so. A lot of the innovation that occurs occurs in some guy's garage, and he builds something new that's never been done before, and the EU steps on those people and crushes them. And then, of course, it's not very democratic. It, uh, they've had uh, three presidents, none of whom are, are elected, of course, and um, the bottom line is when you give away your sovereignty and essentially give up your control um, – of, of, of how your government works, it shouldn't be shocking that you don't end up liking how it works. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't even like it when we have a voice in how it works. But goodness gracious, when, when we don't have a voice in it, what are the chances you'll like it? Can you imagine like going to a restaurant? You just pull up in the restaurant and they'll just bring you what they want to feed you? I mean, you know, maybe occasionally that will work out well, but I bet you most of the time it'd be like, uh, yeah, that, that's not what I wanted. So uh, this is, that's the way the EU works, and yet the left 
doesn't get the message. All the newspapers the next day, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, stupid people. They're racist. They don't like immigrants. Now, I have a feeling immigration was a subtext, but the exit polling showed it wasn't the issue. It was sovereignty. It was the idea of mm -hmm. we should be controlling our own destiny. We don't need a bunch of foreign bureaucrats. Goodness knows we've got enough of them here in England. We don't need another layer in Brussels. And uh, to me... Uh, that's what was going on there. And I think it makes sense. In, in the short run, it will create some instability. There'll be some changes. And you saw the markets react poorly to that because markets love stability. But the reality is, in, in the long run, the, uh, the benefits of ridding yourself of big government, of this regulatory regime, and that has to be positive. It cannot possibly be a negative. George, as I see it, the European Union was just another layer of big government. And of course, this is what liberals love. Liberals love layers of big government. And for, I can remember as a, as a child, people talking about the United States and look how successful we are here. Oh, by the way, maybe we should be or maybe there should be a United States of Europe. But let's talk for a minute why that will not work. Number one, the experiment called the United States is very unique, very unique in history that you had a group of states to unify to create one country. And so far, so far, this experiment here has worked. But how has that experiment worked in other, in other parts of the world? It hasn't. The Soviet Union was a combination of states that created the Soviet Union. That went by the wayside. Then, in, then when you look at other places like Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia, where they've tried to unify states, that has not worked. In uh, Iraq right now, <clears throat> you, Iraq was created back in the 1940s out of the Ottoman Empire. And right now, part of the turmoil that we have in Iraq right now is you have three distinct tribes or populations that have a very difficult time getting along with each other. One of the reasons that it worked here in the United States is we had a commonality. Another reason is we had a common language. Now, in, in Europe... All they've been doing for the last 500 years is fighting with each other. They have different languages. They have different cultures. And when you try to bring all this together, you're going to have friction. People like to be with their own kind. People like to be with people they can talk with and understand. And again, it's my reasons, my feelings why a United States in Europe will not work. Hey, George, got to go to break again. Sorry to do that to you, but you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show, Hour of Action with George Landis and Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk iHeartRadio, Red State Talk Radio, AM, FM, 24-7. Don't go away. George and I will be right back. We'll talk about our guests for today and continue our conversations. Be right back. I really don't care. That's my prerogative. Don't you know I The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 
to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival and a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product in the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food grade 12 ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765-641-9972, 765-641-9972. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commando's Radio Show, our faction with George Landreth, CEO and President of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. For rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our website, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com, or in the afternoons at 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net. At 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com. Or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. You could also hear our show from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. All you need is that number, 832-999-1199. So, George, um, were you surprised by the breakup of the European Union? Or at least of Great Britain leaving? Um, I wasn't, actually. I, um, To be honest... I always thought it was a fool's errand. I didn't see how you take these disparate cultures that have, um, you know, distinctly existed. Um, you know, as you described, all the things that we have in America that are in common, they don't. And it just struck me as what they wanted was a free trade zone to compete with the United States. That's fine. Have a free, a free trade zone. You don't have to have a huge bureaucracy government zone. And that's what they created. Um, and, uh, Anyhow, it just struck me as a stupid idea. And what's interesting is um, you see several other countries talking about they may also hold a vote on whether they want to remain in the EU. So mm-hmm. apparently it's not just a few Englishmen that are, uh, you know, that hate people who aren't Englishmen that want to vote this way. It's actually rational individuals who are unhappy with uh, big government. George, another problem I see that's happening in Europe right now, there is a disease in Europe, okay? It's the economy. And when I call it a disease, look what's happening in Greece with the crash of their economy. Now, when you have a disease going on, what the first thing you should do is to isolate it, to quarantine it. But no, with the European Union, what they're trying to do is they're trying to spread out that disease to the member nations to absorb. And I think that's not a good thing because that's going well, to spread the that's going to spread that dis, that disease of the crashing Greek economy around to the rest of to the rest of Europe. Which is well, all I think that's, that's what has some Europe. of the other countries uneasy about the whole thing because they see that um, the EU seems to be. Um, well, like you said, it's div- it, it's socialist, and so you have a country where people retire twenty years earlier than they do in in Britain and in Germany, and they they work twenty hours less a week than they do in Germany and Britain. And these people are demanding more benefits and and so forth in Greece. And and if you're a German or a Brit, you're asking yourself. So why am I working more hours every week, taking less vacation every summer, and working into my into my golden years when they don't? And I'm doing this so that they can. 
at some point, it's not just, and you could say, well, why are they being so selfish? No, it's not selfish. It's just, it's, it's, at some point, it's kind of like slavery. You know, why, why should a Brit or a, a German uh, be a slave to help support the um, lazy lifestyle of a Greek? And I, if I were there, I wouldn't like it either. You know, George, I re- you know this idea of socialism working. I can remember back t- before the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, I saw a, a satellite photograph of East and West Germany. Okay, and in East Germany, you had these massive, massive government farms, and you would see these big fields. And over in in West Germany, you would see the farms, but the fields were much smaller, okay? However, the farms in West Germany were much more productive than the farms that were in East Germany because the farms that were in West Germany were family farms. They were private farms. There was an incentive to get out there every morning when the sun came up and work till the sun went down to produce the crops. However, in East Germany, you didn't have that. You had co-ops. So it didn't matter how hard you work, you got the same reward. So, again, in East Germany, the, the farms were failing. In West Germany, they were thriving. Socialism well, that, does not work. Another example of that is that in the Soviet Union, they started a program where they allowed the members of the co-op to plant a small personal garden for their family's use. You know, not not a big, and then then there's the government co-op that had the vast fields as you described. And there came a point at which this very small percentage of the uh, land that was being farmed in the Soviet Union produced over, or close to, I think a third of all produce and all foodstuffs that were raised in the Soviet Union, even though it was less than 1% of the land. Mm-hmm. And it was because it was privatized. And there was, yeah, you, if you'd like to work on your little garden over there in your spare time, fine. And they did. And they were, and, and they treated it like theirs and they cultivated it and they worked hard. And it tremendously outproduced by huge uh, factors the, uh, the, the government owned uh, co op farms. So, George, how about if we talk a little bit about our guest today? Absolutely. Well, first, we've got uh, Andrew Peake. He is a professor at the Claremont McKenna College. He's a foreign affairs columnist for the New York Daily News, and he's uh, been a strategic advisor to uh, top U.S. and NATO commanders in in Afghanistan. Um, He's going to talk to us about what's going on with with ISIS and in Turkey. Uh, obviously, this week, in fact, yesterday, there was uh, an attack uh, in Turkey uh, perpetrated by ISIS. And um, the uh, our guest will give us some insights. You know, why did this happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- what have... Some of it, I think, we'll see is uh, Barack Obama's poor management of national international affairs, and some of it's Turkey's fault. But our uh, our guest will have some real insights, given that uh, that's a part of the world that he's a real expert in. Should be a good conversation, I'm sure. Indeed. Um, after him, we will talk with um, Alana Goodman. Now, she is a staff writer for the Washington Free Beacon, a great conservative news site. They do original work. They do investigative reporting. Fabulous website. And um, before she worked there, she was uh, the assistant online editor at The Commentary, which is another great conservative uh, publication. She's written for the Weekly Standard, for the New York Post, and for the Washington Examiner. So she's really uh, quite the uh, quite the ex. And she's going to talk to us about the report that just came out on Benghazi Mm -hmm. and how the White House, while the attack was going on, had a bizarre meeting to discuss and focus on uh, a pastor in America that was talking about burning a copy of the the Koran. Mm -hmm. While, While Americans are under attack, you're worried about some 
politically incorrect and probably kind of a doofus dude. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I didn't, I, I never saw him as being a serious player of anything. I just think he wanted headlines, so he thought I could get it. But still, really? That's what you're doing while in the afternoon while these guys are uh, taking fire. So I think her, her discussion and, and illuminating what was going on and what that Benghazi report shows will be very, very interesting. It might, however, I should warn our listeners, if you have a high blood pressure problem, <laughs> I would definitely take your medication before that segment starts. Right. Because I suspect, as I even read through some of what she's found, I found my blood pressure rising. All right, so we do have a couple of great guests. Andrew Peek, son of Liz Peek, who's a frequent guest here in Conservative Commandos radio show. It runs in the family. Great brains. That's that's good. All right, George, we got about uh, two minutes before we uh, take our next break. Anything else on your radar screen? Well, one, uh, we probably can't do this topic full justice, but I, th I think it's worth pointing out. Every time we have a mass shooting, the president um, begins to tell us that these things happen here but not other places. And that this is, um, uh, for example, after the, uh, the shooting down in Charleston, South Carolina, he said, quote, this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. And that's simply not true. And they, they make all these claims up. They make up that uh, um, they, they use statistics that put us at a disadvantage because of our population, which is three to four times some of the other countries they uh, uh, compare us to other than China. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, the truth of the matter is, if you look at statistics, we're in the middle of the road for mass shooting fatalities. We're not, we don't, we're neither the best nor the worst. We're kind of in there, you know, there are plenty of countries that suffer more mass shooting fatalities mm -hmm. and there's countries that suffer less. For example, Norway has um, 13 to 15 per million, which is 10 to 18 times more than what we have. Hmm. Finland has 2.5 times what we have, you know, and so, you know, these are just, it's you know the the bottom line is um i think as conservatives we have to be prepared to recognize the left's not just going to argue the facts they're going to lie about the facts and then they're going to argue about the lies and um i think that's useful to remember well that that's something that liberals love to do lie about the facts Yep. Or, cur or create lies about the facts, we should say. Yeah, and then argue the lie. Yeah. Just like Obama, you know. It's if you right like your health care, you can keep it. Well, not just that, but after after what happened or in Orlando, okay, it's guns that became the enemy. It be it's guns that were the, the, the real villain. villain. It wasn't terrorism. It was... Yeah. It, well, they must have been really disappointed point when the Boston bombing took place because they couldn't vilify guns there. It was just pressure cookers. Yeah, didn't they try I to... Mean, didn't they try it's, to, it's, to me, it's stunning. Because there's a line through all this, and the line isn't guns. It's actually radical Islamic terrorism. All right. With that, George, it's uh, that great, great time again. So you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show, Hour of Action with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And we're coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, Red State Talk Radio, AM, FM 24-7. Don't go away. On the other side, we'll be speaking with our first guest, Andrew Peek. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card 
or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com. And make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 9-11. It's a day that will go down in our history as the most horrific and destructive scene ever to happen on American soil. It will also be, for most Americans who witnessed it either up close or simply watched in horror on TV, America to participate in a national memorial I call the United Action of Prayer this coming 9-11 and every 9-11 from then on. United Action of Prayer is simply every American stopping whatever they are doing for one minute at precisely 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or pray in memory for the 9-11 victims and their families and perhaps a prayer of gratitude for living in a country where even 9-11 could not at all weaken the spirit of our great nation. If you're in a crash and have little cash, come to AJ Auto Body. We handle insurance claims fast and repairs are guaranteed to last at AJ Auto Body. Come check us out and without a doubt, you'll be satisfied. That's AJ Auto Body, 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. Family owned and operated for 30 years. We are a fully licensed and insured auto repair facility located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. We are your friend in the business. So stop in for a free estimate or call us at 856-251-0096. Check us out on the web at www.ajautobody.net. That's where you'll find our specials, discounts, and coupons. For all your car needs, come to AJ Auto Body, located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. 856-251-0096. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every week day from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. 
WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. This is the Conservative Commando Radio Show with Rick Trader and yours truly, George Landreth. Greetings. We are glad you're back. We have, have, as promised, our next guest, Andrew Peake. But before we go to Andrew and before I introduce him, I just want to remind you that if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please visit our website, www.ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. And in the mornings at 9 a.m., you can log into leadingedgeradionetwork.com and at the afternoons at 1, you can log on to RoarRadio.net. And at 9 at night, you can log on to HighPlainsDailyNews.com. So with a radio, excuse me, with a, without a radio, but with a phone and this number, you can always listen to us live, 832-999-1199. Well, now I get to introduce Andrew. Andrew is a professor at the Claremont McKenna College, and he is also a foreign affairs columnist for the New York Daily News. He was previously a U.S. Army intelligence officer and strategic advisor to top to the top U.S. and NATO commander in Afghanistan. And as a result of that, he has a tremendous amount of insight to offer about what happened in the last few days at the uh, Istanbul airport. Welcome to the Conservative Commandos radio program, Andrew. Hey, thanks so much for having me back. Great to uh, great to be on again. Absolutely. Well, um, obviously, our, our readers or our listeners know, and and, and and those who read you know that the, that uh, I guess what is it, forty four or forty six? I uh, some folks were were uh, were killed. Another uh, what, uh, one hundred and fifty or more were injured. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. No, actually, 230, it looks, 230, yeah. Terrible so, attack. Yeah, so this, this is not just a, a, a small skirmish sort of thing. This is a big deal. So tell us what happened and uh, why should Americans be concerned other than the fact that it's always sad when people are, are harmed like this. But, you know, does this play a role in our lives, or is this just something that happened in a faraway land? Well, look, uh, airports are always going to be a target of radical Islamic groups like ISIS because airports are a symbol of modernity. They're a symbol of the West. There's a place where there's not only a lot of people, but there's a lot of folks from international countries uh, there. And, and these are all symbols that groups like ISIS like to target and tear down because what ISIS and other radical Islamic groups are essentially offering is an alternative worldview to the world we live in now, to the Western world, right? They're offering a, a kind of 7th century caliphate uh, uh, world to live in, which isn't that attractive, so they, they need to show how empty and, and unsafe and, and violent this world is. So that's kind of, that's kind of what ISIS is after. Um, Turkey in, in particular is in a really dangerous situation. You know, they... The Turks made the, the cardinal error of believing us when President Obama said he wanted to remove uh, Syrian President Bashar Assad. So the Turks said, okay, the U.S. has said Assad has to go. Turkey threw itself into the fight against Assad and then was kind of left holding the bag once U.S. reinforcements and supplies and weapons uh, and troops failed to show up. Uh, so, and they were desperate and they adopted a pretty tolerant policy towards any Syrian rebel that would fight Bashar Assad, uh, including what became ISIS. And now ISIS is out of control. You know, how, how it affects us, gosh, I, you know, ISIS is not shy about telling us what they want to do, you know? You have Omar al-Baghdadi, uh, the, the leader of ISIS, and other representatives 
routinely saying they are trying to they are trying to attack Western targets. They are going to flip agents across the border to conduct attacks in the U.S. By media reports, that is exactly what they did in Turkey. They have flipped uh, people over the border, directed from Syria to attack this airport. Uh, and and I, I find it a little ironic that in response to this porous border situation, to the infiltration of ISIS into Turkey, the Turks are building a 700-mile-long concrete wall along their border, and you know, which is a perfectly sensible uh, precaution. Uh, but I don't hear many people complaining about it. So I, I think what it comes down to with us is be wary, and we've got to support some of these common sense policy solutions like uh, border security, like surveillance of radical mosques that may not always be PC, but but are necessary to keep us safe. Quick question: um, the uh, I think most Americans today probably have figured out that when Barack Obama says if you like your health care, you can keep it, um, that your health care is about ready to change radically. But, um, <laughs> and uh, if, I, I just remember being taught as a little kid, if someone starts telling me um, how honest they are, and they spend a lot of time telling me how honest they are, I'd better have my hand on my wallet. And um, <laughs> Barack Obama, of course, spent a lot of time telling us how he's being transparent and honest, a lot of time. And I remember as soon as I started hearing this talk, I thought to myself, this is interesting. You spend so much time. Because the most honest <laughs> people I don't know don't tell me every day how honest they are. I've just figured it out because they are. So my question is, is, is the rest of the world not on to this man yet? Or I mean, is it just now they're starting to wake up and say, hmm? <laughs> well, I think that's absolutely right. And do you notice uh, yesterday or the day before he came on and started telling everyone, about how he was the real populist, not not Trump or whoever else, that he, Barack Obama, was the real populist. Let alone the fact that his entire administration appears to be appears to be constituted of graduate students at you know from 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 sort of elite you know sort of elite tenure track university. I I find him I find uh, almost everything he says uh, nonsensical, but. But I think the trouble is the rest of the world doesn't see our president the way he really is. When he says something, they don't think, oh, it's Barack Obama. He's saying something because he's going to break it. He's going to give us his word because he's going to do the other thing. Uh, they say, hey, that's the United States speaking, right? That is what that is United States policy. It's really unique for a president that every time they say something, that is the position of the United States. Uh, and so I think by now, after after the Ukraine crisis, after doing nothing against ISIS for now uh, two or three years, uh, after empowering Iran, after doing nothing about China, essentially seizing all the oil uh, in, the, in the South China Sea, I, I think at least the bad guys are recognizing that uh, President Obama, when he says something unacceptable, it means it's absolutely acceptable. Interesting. So it, it means uh, wait, wait around and well, I mean, I have noticed I get tired of the um, his response to most everything is a strongly worded press release, uh, and I, I have strongly <laughs> worded in quotes. You know, things like you know ISIS blows up two hundred people, and his response is this is totally unacceptable. You know, yeah, I know. oh okay, that's great, that's great um, because they, because they sit around at their campfires in their caves with their troglodyte friends cowering when they hear the president out of the words unacceptable. Um, right. and, and at any rate, but um, we're going to have to take a break in just a couple minutes. But before we do that, let me just ask you this question. So keep it brief, and then we'll... Is it okay if we keep you over the break, though? So if you're answering... Yeah, of course. Longer? Okay, great, great. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I've noticed with this is that the ISIS started out small and has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And... And when you're treating cancer, early detection and early, uh, essentially, extraction is helpful. And if you wait until the mass has gotten really big, then you've definitely changed your prospects in terms of recovery. So my question is, is that a good analogy here? And if it is, does this mean we're in for a long, hard fight that we could have avoided if we'd been stronger up front and it was something that we could have knocked out more easily? There is no doubt that the mass is turning against us. Uh, over the last two years. 
uh, Islamic radicalism has exploded to four countries and essentially destroyed them, Syria, Iraq, uh, Yemen, and Libya. Uh, there is no doubt that a stitch in time back in 2012, 2013, maybe 2011, when President Obama pulled all of our troops out of Iraq without signing a, an agreement with the Iraqis to provide some continuing assurance, uh, all of those stitches in time might have prevented the fact might have prevented the situation we're in now, which is that the entire Middle East is essentially fending for itself against both Islamic radicals uh, and the threat of Iran. Yes, absolutely. And then we're going to continue this conversation. We're up against the clock. Uh, don't go away, listeners, because we'll have more with Andrew Peek and my good friend Rick Trader. We are listening, you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio program on our flagship station, WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, Red State Talk Radio, AMFM 24-7, and all of those are dot coms. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765-641-9972, 765-641-9972. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commando's Radio Show with George Landreth, CEO and President of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com, or in the afternoons at 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net, and 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com, or at midnight, you can log on to redstatetalkradio.com. Of course, all those times are Eastern. And you can hear our show any time of the day by calling 832-999-1199. Our guest this segment is Andrew Peake. He's a professor at Claremont McKenna College and a foreign affairs columnist for the New York Daily News and previously a U.S. intelligence officer for the Army. Andrew, thanks for holding through that break. We appreciate your time. No problem, Rick. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. 
Always glad to have the, the someone from the Peak family join us to, as guest. <laughs> Always love having the Peaks join us. Uh, Art, Andrew, you wrote here that uh, NATO ally Turkey already has uh, uh, suffering from the mistakes or the sins of uh, trusting Obama. And in here you're talking about... Um, uh, NATO or Turkey, after already claiming Iraq, Syria, and Libya, not to mention Paris and Orlando, it seems like. And I'm, as I'm reading this, Andrew, what I'm thinking is, and I'm also going to add uh, Egypt into the mix. It yep. seems like in all the places where our community organizer intervened, he was wrong, and in places he did nothing, he was wrong too. So was it was it just bad luck? Was it bad judgment or no a no win situation in any of these places? Well, you know, I think that is a very astute point because they intervened in Libya, right? And then uh, and then Libya turned into a disaster with two separate warring governments and a third uh, uh, sort of group dominated by ISIS. Uh, they did nothing in Syria. Uh, and that turned into a major disaster. A and then they did some drones and other operations in Yemen, and that has es essentially split the country in two. So I don't, look, I don't ascribe all of the violence uh, and the terrorism in the Middle East to U.S. US actions. I don't think that's right. Uh, the, the Middle East was a violent place long before the U.S. Uh, came to the table. I do think that there is a very palpable sense under President Obama that the U.S. is not to be feared as an enemy, and it will not be there for its friends. You know, when you talk, when you listen to all the, the heads of states of the Gulf, of the Persian Gulf country, the one thing you hear from them all is, we don't believe that the United States is there for, anymore, is there for us anymore, and it seems like they don't care about Iran. Right. I think that's a legitimate point, and you hear that from Israel also, which is surprising. I, I mean, the one silver lining of all this is that uh, Israel and the Gulf countries have actually built closer ties because they're both frustrated with Obama than they almost ever have before in the past. Andrew, you mentioned Iran, and that's another place where Obama Obama's inaction was wrong during the Green Revolution. There are people, there are hundreds of thousands of people in the streets saying, please help us, help us. Just help us. Don't come here. Just help us. And he did nothing. And look yep. at the mess we're involved with in Iran right now. Hey, Andrew, he one more. He did nothing. Yeah. He wrote a letter to the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, two months before that blew apart, saying, we want to work with you. We believe in you. Essentially, we want to work with your regime. We want it to stay. So it's worse than not helping the, the, the pro-Western Democratic activists. It's actively supporting the regime. Andrew, there's something else that happened within the last few days that I think really fell under the radar screen. Turkish president apologized Monday for downing of a U.S. I'm sorry, of a Russian warplane that they shot down in November. November, and he's apologizing for it now. So do you think that it is a, another sign of Turkey hedging their bets as far as being aligned with the U.S. and maybe wants to make friends with the Russians now? Absolutely. And this is, I wrote an article for the Daily News about this last fall, about how this is, this is the most dangerous thing that's happening in the Middle East. You know, sort of under the radar, we all kind of know that Russia began bombing ISIS last year. But this is actually the first time in history that Russian military power has ever been allowed to operate freely in the Middle East. And it's also the first time in history, or at least the first time since Xerxes, the Persian emperor, that Iran has controlled a swath of territory directly to the Mediterranean, from Iran to the Mediterranean. And Iran and Iraq and Syria and Lebanon, all together, all under the same umbrella, with Russia's support, is a much stronger coalition than anything we have remaining. Those countries have never been allied in the modern day, and now they are. And so what you're going to see is all these countries like Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and eventually Egypt, 
kind of uh, hedging their bets, exactly as you said, uh, and coming to, coming to Russia and coming to Iran and coming to Iraq and Syria to say, hey, this is what we want, will you help us get it, right? That's the role we used to have. That's the, the sort of, not omnipotent, but the great power, uh, the great power that set the rules of the region. Now, it is impossible to overstate how rapidly we're losing influence in the Middle East. Although, you know, perhaps not, because we're losing it at about the same rate everywhere else, also. Interesting. Quick question, and this is George. I just wanted to pick up um, a thought, which was the Kurds are not necessarily the, the favored uh, ethnic group in, uh, in Turkey. And then you have, of course, ISIS. How is that, um, has, has Turkey spent its time perhaps dividing its efforts to trying to weaken the, the Kurds and ISIS and, and maybe been ineffective, uh, especially at uh, weakening ISIS and we see what's happening now? Or, or what, what's, what's that relationship like? It's terrible. No, that's exactly what's happening. And I wouldn't even say that they're dividing their time. I bet they give 20% of their, of their military attention to ISIS and about 80% to the Kurds, which is terrible for us, of course, because our allies, the Kurds, are the only ones who are actually fighting ISIS. But it's pretty clear, and I think, I think Turkey reaching out to Russia is, is another indication of it. I, it's pretty clear that Turkey wants, Turkey is most afraid of a Kurdish homeland emerging in northwestern, northeastern Syria, right? Because in northern Iraq, there's already a sort of regional Kurdish government. Uh, and the PKK, the uh, Kurdish group in Turkey, uh, because of Erdogan's actions, the prime minister of Turkey, has abandoned the ceasefire two years ago, and now there's a fairly raging insurgency in Turkey's southeast. So this is clearly the number one problem for Turkey. Uh, and I think it's, I think it's, I don't want to go back to President Obama all the time because there's other factors, but because we did nothing against ISIS for so long and we allowed this power vacuum in northeastern Syria to emerge, uh, that eventually was filled by ISIS and then eventually the Kurds had to mobilize to fight ISIS, Turkey would not be taking these actions if the Kurds had not been forced to mobilize against ISIS. Right? Essentially, they wouldn't have been taking these actions if we nipped ISIS in the bud. And, and I really do think you have to lay that a little bit on the doorstep of this administration. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's, I, 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 they can always say things are complicated. And my answer to that is things are always complicated. When George Bush was yeah. president, it looked like everything was a cakewalk. It just got complicated on two, in 2009, when, you know, in January 2009. Yes. The world... You look around the globe, everything's getting worse. And I think that's yes. a, an indication of the failure of leadership. Leading from behind is not leading. And yes. we're seeing this in spades right now. It's just, it's out there. It's, if You can't possibly miss this lesson. If you are, you're just dumb. And it's, it's frustrating. Well, you've done a great job of, of um, I think, synthesizing this issue. We've only got a second or two left, but I would like for people to know how they can follow your work. So, Andrew, uh, give everyone your Twitter, your, your web page, whatever it is that they need to, to connect with you. Absolutely. The best way is always on Twitter, at Andrew L. Peek, P-E-E-K. I'm always there. Sounds good. And they can catch uh, your latest writings, whatever you've been, you've been working on there. Excellent. Andrew absolutely. L. Peek. And Peek is you got e, it. E, e, two E's and K. Excellent. Thank you, two Andrew. It's great to have you. Appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. As I said, we're up against the clock, folks, so we are going to take a break. But I want to remind you that we are coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and, of course, around the world on the Internet. American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, Red State Talk Radio, MFM 24-7, those are all dot coms. Don't go away. Rick and I'll be right back.
This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com. And make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 9-11. It's a day that will go down in our history as the most horrific and destructive scene ever to happen on American soil. It will also be, for most Americans who witnessed it either up close or simply watched in horror on TV, America to participate in a national memorial I call the United Action of Prayer this coming 9-11 and every 9-11 from then on. United Action of Prayer is simply every American stopping whatever they are doing for one minute at precisely 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or pray in memory for the 9-11 victims and their families and perhaps a prayer of gratitude for living in a country where even 9-11 could not at all weaken the spirit of our great nation. If you're in a crash and have little cash, come to AJ Auto Body. We handle insurance claims fast and repairs are guaranteed to last at AJ Auto Body. Come check us out and without a doubt, you'll be satisfied. That's AJ Auto Body, 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. Family owned and operated for 30 years. We are a fully licensed and insured auto repair facility located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. We are your friend in the business. So stop in for a free estimate or call us at 856-251-0096. Check us out on the web at www.ajautobody.net. That's where you'll find our specials, discounts, and coupons. For all your car needs, come to AJ Auto Body, located at 1345 Delcy Drive in Deptford, New Jersey. 856-251-0096. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around 
around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. This is George Landreth and Rick Trader and the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Greetings. We're glad you're back. We have another great half hour. We have a tremendous guest with us. I am really excited to introduce Alana Goodman, and I will do that momentarily. But uh, I just want to remind you that if you would like to hear a rebroadcast of our shows, you can check out our websites, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. In the mornings at 9, you can log in to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. In the afternoons at 1, roarradio.net. And at 9 p.m., highplainsdailynews.com. And with a phone and this number, you can always listen to us live, 832-999-1199. All righty, let me introduce our guest. This is going to be a, a great conversation. I think I warned you all that um, this may cause your blood pressure to go up. The truth sometimes does that. Alana is not a mean person. She's not trying to cause you distress, but the truth sometimes can be unpleasant, and I think uh, we're going to hear some truth, and I suspect that we'll find it fairly unpleasant, but it's good to know because we can then use it armed with truth. We can make sure that in the future we don't have to confront these sorts of things again. But let me tell you about Alana. Alana is a staff writer for the Washington Free Beacon. If you don't have that page marked uh, in, on your website, you should. Great website. They do uh, just tremendous uh, articles, exposés, they go in and do uh, original research, and write it up. Great website, Washington Free Beacon. Anyhow, that's where she works. She's previously worked at, as uh, the online editor at Commentary, another great uh, publication, and she's written for uh, the Weekly Standard and the New York Post and the Washington Examiner, all places you should go. So that gives you an idea of her bona fides. She's great. Alana, welcome back to the Conservative Commando radio program. Thanks for having me on. Well, um, I tease this a little bit by saying that uh, as you tell us about what was going on uh, at, uh, at the highest levels of government while the Benghazi attack unfolded, people are going to probably have their blood pressure go up and want to pull their hair out. So I uh, <laughs> encourage people to wear a hat while listening to you and uh, to have taken their high blood pressure medication. With that uh, warning and with that uh, disclosure, I think you can feel free to give us the uh, unvarnished truth. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Well, the, the Benghazi committee, as as you know, just released their long-awaited report this week. Um, Eight hundred pages long. Pages. Yeah, long investigation uh, into the events surrounding the attack and what was going on in government. Uh, and some of the biggest takeaways there, was, there were two for me. One was that. The military, the, there were no assets that were actually sent out while the attack was going on. So it wasn't like, you know, there were planes sent or teams sent that didn't get there in time. They actually weren't sent out until a couple of hours uh, after the attack ended. And this was a 13-hour long, uh, you know, battle that was going on over there. And the Obama administration... Uh, has said just that, by the way, the Aviano Bear Air Base in Italy is just across the Mediterranean. What is that a, 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 for a jet? That's what uh, well less than two hours away, right? I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure on, on the exact time of that, but the Obama administration has been saying, 
Yeah, they they said that you know there was uh, there was not enough time to get there uh, before the attack ended. I mean uh, that that's been their argument all along. They yeah. didn't know how long this attack was going to be going. going you know exactly. They didn't know how long it was going to be going on for. I mean it, it it ended after 13 hours, but it could have gone on for a lot longer than that. But, and nothing was was sent out until after it ended. So that was that was a major thing that was found in this report. Uh, another one that I thought was very interesting, and which we highlighted at the Washington Free Beacon, was uh, more information about this 7.30 p.m. meeting that took place at the White House. Uh, this is about four hours after the attack began. Um, Hillary Clinton actually attended this meeting. It was with other senior officials. Uh, I, I believe it, it, she was the highest ranking official who was attending uh, it was a teleconference. Um, and the committee was able to get notes from this meeting with action items. There were 10 action items discussed, and five of them apparently related to a YouTube video, um, you know, the administ on the administration response to the YouTube video uh, that, of course, uh, the innocence of Muslims, um, I I'm sure people remember, this is a, a video, it's a kind of mocking Islam uh, that the administration blamed for almost two weeks after the attack, um, you know, li linked this to protests outside the consulate in Benghazi and, and some of these protests spiraled out of control and it was, you know, a result of, of this video. Um, and at the time... This was the guy that picked the, up and put in jail, if I recall, didn't they? Sorry? The guy who did this video, he's the guy that the government put in jail? Yeah, he, he was... Uh, and I'm uh, saying unrelated. And while we swiftly took care of him, but we didn't, couldn't lift a finger to help the guys in Benghazi. That's... Sure, and then and one, so one of the action items was for Hillary Clinton to come out and make a statement about uh, the video and about the attack, and they also also discussed that the meeting was a pastor in Florida, uh, Terry Jones, who uh, back in 2011, he was involved in, he was going to burn a copy of the Quran, and there were massive protests um, across the Muslim world about this, it led to many deaths, I think 20 people died in the protest, but, uh, you know, what his connection was to the video, I mean, there was, there was no real connection between him and, and this YouTube video, so it was interesting that he was also raised at the meeting, and uh, apparently there were discussions about, you know, whether to contact him and, and all of that. So so while the attack, you know, four hours in, into this 13-hour attack, um, this is something that was a big fixation for the administration, uh, discussing discussing this, this YouTube video and uh, uh, how to address that publicly. Interesting. Well, uh, yeah. we've got to take a break in just a moment. So perhaps what I can do here, um, uh, could, uh, one is, can you come back uh, after the break and continue this conversation? Because this is quite interesting. And while I don't want to cause anyone a coronary, I would like to continue the conversation. Sure, yeah. I can do a few minutes after that. Excellent. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just to take up the balance of our, our, of our time before we have to take that break. I just want to ask you a pretty simple question. But the uh, so they were as the attack was going on, they were already spending time working on this whole offensive video and um, burning the Quran nexus, if you will. Even though they're of course unrelated, even in time and, in, and the people didn't even know each other. But um, that was their focus while the attack's going on. This wasn't like a day yeah. later or two days later, but, th you know, they've just got word attacks going on. They know the attack is happening, right? They're not, they're not meeting without knowledge of that. No, this was actually, this was a meeting specifically to address the ongoing attack. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Well, as yeah. I said, we're up against the clock, but we are going to be right back with Alana Goodman and uh, more about this whole Benghazi report and what it reveals. It is some pretty big stuff. We were always told it wouldn't have anything in it. There's no news there. Move along. It turns out Alana has found that's not the case. We're coming to you live from the Consumer Commandos Radio Network Studios, WMJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia. 
And of course, we are coming to you around the world on Al Gore's amazing internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, Red State Talk Radio, AMFM 24-7. Those are all dot coms. Do not go away. We will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765 641 9972. 765 641 9972. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856 227 1360. Your opinion counts at 856 227 1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Greetings, Patriots. We are back with more of the Conservative Commandos Radio program with George Landreth and Rick Trader. And as I promised, we will continue this in very interesting and enlightening conversation with Alana Goodman. But before we get back to her, just want to remind you that you can always hear a rebroadcast of our show. Check out our websites ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. In the mornings at 9, you can log into leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1, you can log into roarradio.net. And at 9, at night, highplainsdailynews.com. And with this phone number and a phone, you can always call and listen live to Conservative Commandos, 832-999-1199. We've been talking with... Uh, Alana Goodman, as I mentioned, she is uh, a reporter, uh, a writer with the uh, with the um, with the Beacon, uh, the Washington Beacon. She does great work. It's a great publication. Uh, you you absolutely have to bookmark them on your uh, the Washington Free Beacon does great stuff. So it's WashingtonFreeBeacon.com. You got it. You got to do it. Or I guess it was just FreeBeacon.com. Sorry. So yeah. go to that website and and, and make sure you mark it. But, um, Alana, before we left, you were telling us how they'd gotten word the attack was underway. They'd been told it was a terrorist attack. They had been told nothing about any sort of protest. It was clearly a terrorist attack. And they're sitting down in Washington having meetings not to solve the problem, not to send help, not to protect, but to talk about this pastor in Florida that uh, a year or two earlier wanted to burn uh, Korans and this uh, offensive YouTube video that some, you know, idiot made. It, it's quite frankly not very high quality. I mean, it's, it looks to me more yeah. like a bad high school play. 
But yeah, um, it's exactly. someone's video. But at any rate, so that was their focus. This meeting was, that was not the about... Focus. I don't yeah, so coming out of that meeting, so so based on the notes of, the, of that meeting, that, were, that was a significant part of their discussions. Um, and and also one of, one of the interesting things from the report is uh, that they were receiving, the State Department was receiving uh, basically play-by-plays of, of what was going on on the ground at this time. Um, they were, were in touch with people in Benghazi uh, and people in Tripoli who were telling them about, you know, giving them updates. Uh, and it was no people who were interviewed um, about this by the Benghazi committee said that you know they had never mentioned anything about any protests, any riots outside of the consulate. Uh, you know this had never come up. They believed uh, immediately that this was a terrorist act, um, and and this was coming in uh, as I said, like you know in, in real time to. The State Department. It was going through Patrick uh, Kennedy, who is the secretary under Secretary for Management at the State Department. And uh, Patrick Kennedy told the Benghazi Committee that he was updating Hillary Clinton about this throughout the evening. Um, so, you know, what even while they're in this meeting discussing it, the intelligence that's coming in, the real time stuff from the ground, uh, there was no mention as, as far as the House Benghazi Committee was able to find there was, there was no mention of any protests or riots that could have gotten confused uh, in the intelligence. Wow. That is, to me, stunning. I, I, I think we all kind of knew this in our heart of hearts, but to have it kind of proven through, uh, essentially, they had over 100 witnesses, 75,000 pages of documents, and uh, that's amazing. But uh, I want to yeah. get... Uh, my uh, my good friend Rick, the original conservative commando, back into this conversation. He's been waiting patiently, and I do not want to tax his patience. So, Rick, no hey, problem with that. Uh, here at the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, we are speaking with Elena Goodman. Elena, you know this whole narrative of the of the video. Any inkling where this came from in the first place? See, it seems to me very interesting that they the, initially they they're they blame the attack on this video, this this badly made, very amateurish video where, that no one saw, no one saw prior to this rush to judgment blaming the video. It also is ironic to me that as an aftermath of this Senate investigation that the military is being blamed for all this now. So it's... Oh, it's this stupid video is being blamed at the, the, the for the cause of the Benghazi disaster, and now the military is being blamed at the tail end of it. So, do you, any idea where this the the idea of blaming the video to start out with came from? Well, it's not entirely clear where it came from, but it appears to have come from from the White House. Um, and Ben Rhodes, who is the National Security Advisor for President Obama, um, you might uh, have read the profile about him in the New York Times a couple months ago about um, how he spun the Iran deal, uh, you know, in favor of the administration's position on this, and, and he did this publicly. And he was kind of bragging about this in the New York Times. Um, it, this was apparently he was pr- apparently one of the people who was behind the scenes pushing this narrative uh, early on, and he told the Benghazi committee that he was was not sure where he heard this. Mm. He, he was not at the you know at that uh, during the attack. He, he was not sure where he had you know put put two and two together and and said that this is you know related to a video. He he couldn't say the specific source of that um, and. You know, it doesn't appear that anybody is <laughs> who who is interviewed is saying like you know what the specific source of this was. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it was it was the narrative that they eventually uh, that they landed on. I mean, not not even eventually. They they landed on this immediately. Um, as I said, for you know, four hours into the attack, they're discussing this. And you know, it's interesting. The, the Obama administration, one of the one of the uh, defenses of why they were you know, linking it to the video in the beginning was, oh, well, you know, we didn't have the proper intelligence at the time. We were getting conflicting intelligence. 
it was the fog of war, you know, um, they, things get mixed up at the beginning. But remember, I mean, this went on for almost two weeks after after the attack happened, where the administration continued to link it to the video, even though uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, and this was also included in the Benghazi Committee's report, Hillary Clinton was saying privately on the night of the attack, you know, emailing her daughter Chelsea Clinton saying this was an al-Qaeda, this is a, a terrorist attack by an al-Qaeda-like group. Um, and and uh, just a couple of hours after she sent that email to her daughter Chelsea, she put out the administration's first public statement on right. the attack. And it, that statement, it, you know, refers to, it doesn't say explicitly that you know, this is because of protests, but it makes the first reference linking it to. Um, hey, Elena, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I want to bring in this other element that you write about in your article. This this element that uh, Leon Panetta and Martin Dempsey were reaching out to Pastor Jones, also looking at him to blame him for this. Now, this isn't something that I've heard before until I read your article. Yeah, so that, that was, uh, you know, as I said, Terry Jones came up during the meeting, and, and that was discussed, you know, uh, oddly enough. And it was this, um, one of the action items was, well, maybe we should have Leon Panetta uh, reach out to Terry Jones and discuss this with him for whatever reason. Again, like, we're, we're it's four hours into the attack. The attack is still going on. It was uh, 13 hours long, and... It, they're talking about reaching out to a pastor in Florida. Um, you know, it, 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 definitely, it definitely shows that it's interesting priorities at, at this meeting. Sure. Hey, Elena, we, we really have to run. Elena Goodman, staff writer for the Washington Free Beacon. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the show. Like George has been saying, you guys do great work. Please tell our audience where they could go to read your articles and follow all the work of the Washington Free Beacon. Okay, great. Yeah, I, we're at freebeacon.com, and my Twitter handle is Alana, as at Alana Goodman. Again, Alana Goodman, thank you so much for joining us today. You take care. God okay. bless. Take care. Well, George, we've had another great show. I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co-host. I also want to thank our, our guest, Andrew Peak. Uh, Andrew Peak, our most recent guest, Alana Goodman. Uh, George, we got about uh, 30 seconds. Final thoughts? No, I, I thought it was interesting that uh, Chairman Gowdy said. He said, I simply would ask the American people to read this report for themselves, look at the evidence we've collected, and reach their own conclusions. You can read this report in less time than our fellow citizens were taking fire and mm -hmm. fighting for their lives on the rooftops and on the streets in Benghazi. Another thing I think is interesting about all this, the producer of the video and I can't pronounce his name, but he was he was arrested on probation violations because of this and spent almost a year in jail yeah. with, with over a million dollar bond that obviously couldn't reach. So he is also a victim. You got four victims of the killings, but no one no one is really placing the blame on the on the ones that need to be blamed. That's Hillary Clinton. That's Barack Obama. No one has ever been able to explain where he was. No one knows where Barack Obama was during the night of this attack. Yeah. Hillary's campaign says the committee report has not found anything to contradict the conclusions of the multiple earlier investigations. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that she's saying that we, we should move on now. The report is out. Nothing new. Let's move on. What difference does it make? Hey, George, again, I want to thank you for uh, sitting in today. And I want to thank Mr. John Forsythe, Jr. for working in the boards. But for right now, we're out of time. We've got to run. we got to go. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio.